Well, good morning. Before we get started, just make sure that um, you picked up a business meeting packet off of the back table. We'll be looking at that at the end of the service. Well, it's good to look out and see you all here this morning. Let's stand together. We have several out this morning due to different types of illnesses, some colds, um, other things. So just look around, see who's not here, and just maybe reach out to them today in some way, encourage them. We always miss them when they're not here. Uh, Brother Edwin is going to come. Oh, there you are. And he's going to lead us in our opening prayer. He's stepping in. Sometimes people are out. We have to punt. Kim's not well. Brother Bob's not well. And others. So um, Edwin just graciously, whatever you need, I'll do it. So he's going to pray for us and then we'll sing together. If you want to go ahead and have your hymnal ready, it's going to be 359. This is the day. And then 231. Come, Christian, join to sing. Thank you, Edwin. Lead us in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for allowing us to come together today. Father, we come to that time where we worship you. We love you. And Father, we honor and glorify you. Father, be with Brother Marcus and bring your word. And Father, be with the, uh, the uh, music and service. Father, may it touch our hearts. Father, be with each one of us and help us to be a lighthouse to those who have uh, no church on and have no other without salvation. Father, be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, our scripture is Matthew 18, 19, and 18. Truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Let's sing together, 359 and then 231. We will reach. 
Society. May our gifts provide you through our church, our community, our parish. Father, I pray that you be with us, continue to bless us, and bless God to praise you word to our congregation. Father, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing if you can. If you can't, then be seated. Draw me close. Let's continue to worship together. <laughs> Feel the warmth of your 
Father, that's our prayer this morning. That you help us wake up to the reality, to the, to the truth that you are here with us. In Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Kyle, for moving over and helping out. Appreciate it. Miss Janice, thank you for helping out. Appreciate it, Margie. Everybody had to kind of switch a roo this morning. That's okay. Um, we appreciate all the flexibility. If you would take your Bibles and go ahead and get set up for our message today, <coughs> we'll be looking at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Last week, last Sunday, we finished up our reset series. Uh, we began the series with blank canvas. And then we moved into our four simple prayers of reset. Jesus reset my heart. Re Jesus reset my mind. Jesus reset my voice. Jesus reset my hands. It was the reset, the springboard for what we together begin this morning as we embark on a new series entitled Draw Near. Now the theme verse is from James, James chapter 4, verse 8a. You'll see it on the screen. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. That's the uh, English Standard Version. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Now as we journey together through the series, our destination is going to be Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, the last Sunday in March. Now the series is going to be a seven-part series that we will be pairing with 40 days of Lenten Reflections. So beginning this coming Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, I will be recording Lenten Reflections. Kim will be posting them each day beginning this Wednesday Ash Wednesday, and they're going to run through March the 30th. That's 40 days, not counting Sundays. So there will be no recordings posted on Sundays of our Lenten Reflections, but Monday through Saturday there will be daily posts for us to reflect through Lent as we prepare and, and, and let the Holy Spirit till the soul of our hearts and our minds to prepare us for Easter now, the, the, the videos are going to be posted to our YouTube channel. Now, I know a, a lot of you probably don't look at YouTube, but I encourage you to do so, if nothing else, but for this Lenten Reflections. Now, on the screen, uh, if you can see it, I'm, I'm kind of working with a new background, but the name of our channel, Facebook, uh, YouTube works off of channel, so our channel name on YouTube is you type this in in the YouTube search, be transformed space, be the church space, be love, be multiplied. Usually by the time you type in be love, you will see our church logo. And our church logo is a tree, is a green blooming tree, and it has IBC. The, the trunk is the I and then BC. That is our YouTube channel name. Be transformed, be the church, be love, be multiplied. We should pop up. You, you, you click on our logo and it takes you to all of our videos. If you haven't subscribed to that channel, then you have the option to subscribe. So I encourage you to do that. So we're pairing this seven-part series with 40 days of Lenten Reflections online. Prepare till the hearts our hearts for Easter. Encourage you to do that. You'll hear more about that before Wednesday. Let's pray together and we'll continue into the Word. Father, we thank you for this time in our service where we draw all of our attention to your Word, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, the workings of the Holy Spirit. Father, just speak to us this morning. Open our hearts, open our minds to receive the message that you have for us. Lord, we're all going to hear and take away different elements from the message. But Father, we know it's going to produce something in each person's life that sits under your word. You promised us that. So Father, we just pray that you begin that work 
in our hearts and our minds, begin tilling that soil to prepare us for the most wonderful celebration of our entire year, Easter, Resurrection Sunday. Father, help us be awake, help us be attentive, just to learn what you'd have us to learn today. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Now, I know it's going to be kind of difficult for some of the men to stay awake, but that's not an excuse. We had a good breakfast this morning. So I'm going to be watching and we'll call your name if I see you sleeping. No, I won't. I won't do that. There was a day that people did that. I, I won't do that. But do your best to stay awake. It's a, little, it's a little warm in here, but we can do it. So let's go ahead, if you would, and let's interact with the Word of God. James chapter 4 we're going to simply read through the first 10 verses. And as, we, as I read and as you follow along, you're going to be looking for those key teachings, those key points in this text. James 4, 1 through 10. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be friend, a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. What's it going to be like? What's it going to be like when we are in the presence of God? Very interesting, as I was doing research for the message, uh, I ran across a study that was done by the University of Arizona. It was done uh, regarding preschoolers. The research showed that preschoolers ask between 100 to 200 questions per day. That's approximately one question every two minutes. Now those of you who have worked with preschoolers or are working with preschoolers, you can feel those numbers. Children are so inquisitive. Well, that's how they learn. Why? Why? Where are you going? What are you doing? You know, it's the same for us as adults. Part of our learning process involves asking questions. Have you ever wondered or maybe asked out loud, what's it going to be like when we're in the presence of God? You know, I don't think, well, no, I do think that there is value in asking that question. What's it going to be like? We're in the presence of God. There's value in asking that question. I do believe that. But as we think about it deeply, as we think about that question from a biblical perspective, we realize that we are right now in the presence of God. Right now, God is with us now by the indwelling power and presence of of His Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit in us. Now we can back this up with Scripture. There is a lot of Scripture that backs up the fact that God is with us now. There are two texts, however, one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament that are so straightforward that we can't deny 
that God is with us presently now. That's Psalm 139, 7 through 10. And 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. David, a man after God's own heart, wrote these words. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Listen to the words. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the othermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. David went on to say, even in my mother's womb, you were with me. You formed me in my mother. David understood that God was very present with him through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit of God. David understood that Paul, the great biblical evangelist, wrote these words in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Listen to the word. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple... God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Paul understood that God was very present with us, very present with the church through the Holy Spirit. Old Testament, New Testament, holding hands, agreeing with each other. With each other. David, the Spirit of God is with us always. Paul, the, whole, the Spirit of God is with us always. Paul and David understood this. Now let's pause and ask ourselves this do we grasp this truth do we really understand that god is presently with us do we understand that we don't have to wait until we get to heaven to experience the presence and power of god god is with us presently now through his very spirit in us, working in us, working in our church, working in our homes, working at our workplace, working all around us. We're in the presence of God. Okay, now we know this truth up here. Sometimes it's difficult to get it heart and to get them functioning together as one. We know that truth up here in our heads. We just heard the truth from the Word of God. So why? In the midst of difficult circumstances, in the midst of adversity, do we often find ourselves asking, where is God? Is God even here? Now let me ask this as humbly and as non-judgmentally as I can. If you and I don't see, if you and I don't experience God on a daily basis, why? He's here. He's here. Why? If God is here, why don't we see Him? Why don't we experience Him on a daily basis? You'll see that right there on the screen. Back up one. There it is. God is here. His Spirit already lives in us and all who believe in Him. But it's evident that sometimes in our lives there may develop a divide between us. A divide between us and God. We cannot come literally any nearer to God than we always are. For He is always near. He is always present. The key to understanding James chapter 4 is to understand that it's not about God, it's about us. James chapter 4 is about us, it's not about God. If God is here, why don't we see Him? Why don't we experience Him on a daily basis? Well, it's because of us. Our choices, because of us, because of our choices, there are moments when we drift away from the constant. We drift away from God. The divide. When? How do we drift? Well, let's think back through the text. Listen. When? How do we drift? Verse 1. When there is fighting and quarreling among us, they come from the desires that battle within us. Now, this doesn't apply to our fellowship. Praise the Lord. 
But it does apply to many fellowships. Quarreling and fighting. Been a part of them. Seen it. Not that I was fighting and quarreling. <laughs> Just, that doesn't apply to here, to us. Verse 2. Why do we drift? When we desire and covet what we don't have, so we kill, quarrel, and fight. Now this doesn't apply to our fellowship, or at least not all of it does. We don't kill. We here in this fellowship don't quarrel. We don't, we don't fight, but we do covet. Guilty. We do covet. Yearn to have what someone else has. We can never be satisfied. We cannot be content. I'm preaching to myself. When, how do we drift? Verse 3. When we're selfish. When we're selfish. When we constantly put ourselves above others. Wrongfully. When, how do we drift away from God? Verse 4a. When we walk in a spiritually adulterous manner by having fellowship with the world. We cannot, to live an abundant Christian life, we cannot hold hands tightly with the world view and with the biblical view. We cannot ride the fence. What did Christ say about lukewarmness? I will spit you out of my mouth. We have to be hit on his side. We can't hold hands with the world and hold hands with God and his kingdom purposes. We cannot be in the middle. We've got to be on his side. We walk spiritually in an adulterous manner. And what that means is we take other things over him. We do things over what he's calling us to do. We are adulterous spiritually. Now that could apply to our fellowship. Does it? Walking spiritually in an adulterous manner? Anyone who chooses to be friends of the world becomes what? An enemy of God. We cannot live in both realities, spiritually speaking. Do we ever find ourselves walking in a way, living in a way that is contrary to the Word of God? If we do, we're becoming adulterous spiritually. Do we try to live up to the world's standards or do we try to live up to God's standards? Which is the best? God's standards every time. Try it. We have tried it. Does it work? Does it work? When? How do we drift away from God? Verse 6. When we are sinfully prideful. Now there's not there, there's two kinds of pride. One pride, I'm, I'm so proud of, of the accomplishment of Kyle being able to play the keyboard by ear and the piano by ear, not reading a note. I'm proud of that. That's okay, but to, to, to be prideful is like, look at me, y'all. Me. That, that's the sinful pride. That's the sinful pride. Now, I think we get the picture here. Often in our lives, because of our choices, there are moments when we drift away from God. We drift away from the constant. If we don't see God, if we don't experience Him on a daily basis, it's because we've spiritually drifted away from Him. Now, if this describes us, what do we do? If you realize that some of these descriptions are what you're living now, if this describes us, what do we do? What do we do if we realize that we have drifted away from God? His precepts, His teaching, His fellowship. What do we do? Now the answers are right there in the text. I love this chapter because it's boom, 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 outline, 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 clear as a bell. What do we do if we realize that we've drifted away from God? Verses 6 and 10. Humble ourselves before God. What typically do you think of the posture of humiliation, of humbleness? Down low, like this. Now God it says, come before my presence boldly. There's no veil. We can do that. But to come with right motive, clear thinking, focusing on Him, we come humbly before Him. We find that we've drifted away. Here's one thing you do. Come humbly before Him. Verse 7. The second thing, submit. Submit ourselves to God and resist the devil. So submit to him as, Lord, what do you have for my life today? Every time we wake up, Lord, what do you have for me today? May I be attentive, may I be aware, may I see, and then may I act. Submit. Humble, submit. What do we do if we find that we've drifted away from God? Verse 7, submit. Verse 8, Repent. Now you can read verse 8 and you say the word repent's not in there, but you're correct, but this is what it means. Repent. Wash our hands and purify our hearts. 
Now, that's something that Christ has already done for us on the cross. So understand that. In Christ, we are holy. But often as we drift, we, we get our hands dirty. We get our hearts dirty with, with trying to be and live up to the world's expectations. So repent. Wash our hands. Purify our hearts. Remember from our reset series, our mouths speak what our hearts are full of. Our minds do what, what our, our hands do, what our minds tell us to do. We are what's in our hearts and our minds. Verse 8 symbolically represents literal repentance. So you have symbolic writing in verse 8, which means literal repentance. So far, humble ourselves, submit, and repent. When we spiritually see a divide, we correct the divide, we draw near, we return to God in these ways that we've just described, that we've just thought through. The Holy Spirit through James teaches us that God will do what? He will draw near to us. Now that means, okay, God is constant. He's not coming any closer to us. He is as close as he's going to be on this earth in the spirit. We're over here. We come back to God. So what it means is when we say draw near to God, come back to God, shorten, get rid of that divide. God is the constant. That means that we will sense his nearness. Okay? We're already as close to him as we're going to get on the earth. So he's not drawing back, oh, well, you're away from me, so I'm going to run away from you. It's not that attitude. The attitude here is we will sense his presence. That's a huge key. We draw near to him. He will draw near to us. That means we will be able to once again sense the very presence of God. And then added to that, when we spiritually draw near, when we spiritually return to God, he will draw near to us. And verse 10 says, James says through verse 10, and he will lift us up. He will lift us up. As we uh, sing our song of reflection this morning, Janice is going to come, Margie's going to come, Kyle, thank y'all. As we sing our song of reflection this morning, if you realize that you've drifted away from God, if we realize that we've drifted away from God, let me encourage you, let me encourage all of us to humble ourselves, submit ourselves before Him, resist the devil that is temptations, and spiritually wash our hands and our hearts. That is repentance. Humble, submit, repent. Now as we continue to journey together toward Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Everything is coming together for this one purpose. It's my prayer that the Holy Spirit will do a work in us that will help us to recapture. This is so important. This is the whole premise of the series and the reflections throughout the week. That the Holy Spirit will do a work in us that will help us to recapture the holiness, to recapture the beauty, to recapture the joy of the resurrection of Jesus. Christmas has nothing over Easter. Holy Week. Let's stand together. Let me lead us in prayer. You want to pray at your seat, pray at the altar, want me to pray with you, you realize you've got a gap between you and the Lord. Do those three things. Humble, submit, repent, and let's let that divide be gone. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time in our service. Where we just pause, we take a breath, and we say, Holy Spirit, do your work. <laughs> Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. God, do what you, only you can do through the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, I pray that this year, in my heart, in your people's hearts, that this Easter be different. That it not be the same as it always has been. That it be different. That we recapture the holiness. That we recapture the beauty. That we recapture the joy of Christ's resurrection, Lord. Change us through this series of messages. Change us through the reflections throughout the week on Lent. Father, help us to, 
to fully grasp the seriousness of being humble before you, of being submissive before you, and being able and, and bold enough to repent when we realize we're wrong. Lord, bring us back to you. Help that divide be gone in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's sing together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, 320. If you want me to pray for you, you'll be happy to do so. Let's sing together. Three twenty. Hymn number three twenty.
seated for just a few moments while I scramble up my ministry map. Thank you for your patience. Just a few things to mention. I've already mentioned about starting Wednesday, we have daily reflections for 40 days. Tune in on YouTube, look at those. We would post them to our website, but we still are having problems with that transitioning from one platform to another. So just pray over that, that it may work out. But right now it'll be on YouTube beginning Wednesday. Uh, also, the 21st coming up, we continue our discipleship class, Spiritual Kit, Five Keys to Spiritual Growth. We have several books still left out there. If you want to be a part of this study, please pick up a book, sign up, and I already read through what the worship ministry map tells us to do. I'm not going to read it all. But anyway, and again, men, thank you for breakfast this morning. It was good as usual. There's also another sign-up sheet in the foyer, and that's for college and career food. If you'd like to sign up uh, to provide something for the kids, uh, the students, the adults, I keep saying kids, um, please sign up. Uh, we have the rest of this month to go, and then March, which you'll see that sign-up out there as well. The, the Valentine wall, photo wall is up. We'll take your picture there to commemorate Valentine to send it to someone. Just please take advantage of the photo backdrop that I have set up out there, please. Let me see. I want to thank John Christian for signing up for the nursery today. Obviously, you weren't needed today, but you signed up in case, so thank you so, so much for signing up, John. I really appreciate that. And then as we... Um, well, there's the book, Survival Kit. I meant to show that to you. They're out there on the thing. Please take one and, and participate with us. We'll be meeting in the grace room. And if, make sure that as we finish our song in just a minute, you, if you don't have a business meeting packet, please grab that, and we will look at fourth quarter financials and then uh, look at our 2024 budget proposal. Anything else I'm unaware of that I should have announced? Heart to heart, y'all met already? Men's breakfast was today. Um, all right, let's stand together. Um, if you are um, not a member of Emmanuel Baptist and you want to slink out during the business part, you're welcome to do so. But if you are a member, um, I encourage you to stay and be a part of, of what God is going to be doing through us financially for 2024. Edwin's going to pray for us. Kyle's going to turn off the video, so our business meeting is just between us. We're going to sing Miss Janice and Margie, What a Mighty God We Serve, and then you're dismissed to business. Let's go, Lord, and pray. Dear Father, thank you for such a blessing that we've had today. Um, the sermon, the message that you've brought before us, Lord, we thank you that you have blessed our hearts, and blessed our prayers. May it bless our communion. Father, we thank you for blessing us. As we live out our daily activities, all right, what a mighty God we serve. Let's sing together. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels. 